The San Diego Garden Railroad Society commissioned me to build a 124th scale boat for their exhibit at 2019 San Diego County Fair. The model was to represent early 20th century Kansas railroading. It needed to float in the exhibit for five weeks unattended. I chose wood planking bonded to a foam core to make a simple, durable, unsinkable structure. One inch thick pink project foam board panel was cut to the length and width of the barge. G gauge track was painted and bonded to the board. Foam spaces were added so the deck planking would lie just below the rail heads. Square wood pegs were fitted into tight slots cut into the foam with a razor saw and bonded with marine grade epoxy. Similar blocks were recessed into the foam at the corners of the barge to provide reinforcement. 1 8 inch by 5 8 inch strips of redwood were used for planking boards. Full length planks were scribed with a hacksaw blade perpendicular to the plank to represent seams. After the planks were bonded to the hull, brads were inserted on either side of the seams and they were allowed to rust naturally. Gorilla construction adhesive was used at all wood to foam joints, but two-part epoxy was used at wood to wood joints, like corners, mooring cleats, and edges between the decks and the sides. Deck stain was used lightly applied with a paintbrush and wiped down with a rag. Small cleats were made by soldering 1 16th inch brass rod through two 1 16th inch cotter pins. Details were also added to the barge to give it a working appearance. Shaped foam spacers were bonded to the base to give the hull the required freeboard and to provide a gently curved deck. The push knees were built up from wood strips and inserted into T-slots in the foam. The hull was then planked in the same way as the barge. A paper template was used to construct the paddle wheel. Styrene arms were cut and located against the paper template and the center hubs and support rings were bonded in place. Paddles were bonded to the wheels in a foam board tool which held the wheels parallel evenly spaced and properly clocked. An axle through the wheel hubs maintained concentricity. The paddle wheel support frame was cut from polycarbonate sheet using a paper pattern. Telescoping square styrene tubes also made up part of the frame. 1 8 inch bronze bushings were inserted into oversight holes in the frame. The 1 8 inch paddle wheel shaft maintained bushing alignment while epoxy was injected into the oversized hole around the bearings to form a match bond for the bearing alignment. The cabin core was a mostly hollow box and designed to be removable and to provide access to RC equipment. Doors were built up from strip wood and bonded in place prior to planking the cabin. The cabin was planked similarly to the way the car float was planked. Opening wheelhouse windows slide between flanges in styrene I-beams. Completed window track frames were planked over with strip wood. Doors were fabricated by attaching strips of wood to a clear plastic panel. Nylon model airplane hinges attached the openable doors to the wheelhouse. The wheelhouse used wood frame construction to allow for a detailed interior. The utility boat, the whistle, and several Bachman G scale figures, which were used as crew, came from the scrap box. The smokestack is a modified pop-up sprinkler tube, and the cook stove was left over from a Pico building. The running lights are operational. After the boat was exhibited at the county fair, it was retrofit with a 2.4 gigahertz RC setup. The battery was located far forward to compensate for the weight of the paddle wheel, which is aft. A standard electronic speed control regulates the motor and a standard servo controls the steering. A worm attached to a shaft drives a gear on the paddle wheel. The drive shaft is guided by match bonded bronze bushings, similar to the way the paddle wheel was installed. 
The shaft passes through the splash wall. It is driven by an electric motor with a reduction gear set. The triple rudder assembly is attached behind the paddle wheel. It is driven by a flexible link rod passing through a guide tube which is attached to the paddle wheel support structure. At the sea trials it was found that the stern was low in the water, but when the paddle wheel was powered up it would dig in and pull the stern even lower and that would flood the equipment bay. Foam strakes were added aft to increase the buoyancy to stern and they also act as small keels to reduce side slip when operating in a crosswind or when turning. A lip was also added around the equipment bay to prevent water on the deck from flowing into the bay. The push boat is now quite seaworthy. It is more than adequate with speed and power and maneuverability and its unique appearance attracts a lot of attention whenever it sails. If you enjoyed this video, share it with a friend. Give it a like, and if you'd like to stay up with future content, please subscribe to the channel. And thank you for watching.